G'day. Today we're doing a repair on a Ford Mondeo 2013 model and it's got the 2 litre uh, turbo diesel engine in it with the 6 speed 6 DCT 450 transmission. What's happening? There's an intermittent problem or well, constant intermittent problem where uh, the shifts are neutralising. It goes to neutral very hard shift, jumping around, doing all sorts of things, bucking, carrying on. Um, there's also a warning light on the dash. What we're going to do is, uh, first of all, we're going to check the basics, fluid level, uh, make sure the battery's nice and strong. You can pop the under the air filter here, there's a fill plug and there's also an earth strap that you need to check just to make sure that uh, the earth strap's not sitting on the paint um, that you've got a good good earth going to the transmission because they are electronically controlled clip there and then you flick that little clip there and you can see the OBD plug okay and after a short drive this is what's coming up. I'm going to just select the live data on those fault coded solenoids and just see what shows up. New data. You can see slightly out of parameters but not much I have cleared the codes there I'll use the graphics now the top scales the desired and the bottom one is the actual And the solenoid D Same thing So those fault codes were actually saying that solenoid C was stuck off and the performance of solenoid D. There was a pending fault coming up on solenoid D. Now I'm in park, I'm in reverse, oh, turn that off into drive you can see solenoid D at the bottom it's a little squiggle there when we're going into drive We'll see what happens with solenoid C. In park, in reverse. In drive. Solenoid C, the code coming up was that it was stuck off. So that seems to be working now. So definitely contaminated, turn that off, definitely contaminated solenoids. Probably due to not being serviced regularly. 
So to get the air filter out, and we pull this plug out. Make sure you blow any loose um, dirt or anything off there before you start any work. And this, if you just wriggle it, wriggle it out like so, that'll just, just maneuver it around that battery box. And there we go whole thing just comes out. Um, that, that little snorkel there where the air goes in, you just need to maneuver it around under there. Now to check the fluid level, there's a little plug just behind the uh, passenger side or left hand axle um, with an allen key. And you, you just check the oil le level there. To fill it, you fill it through this plug here. So you need to take this off anyway. Now over here we can see the earth strap that goes from the transmission and that's just bolted to uh, one of the uh, engine mounts or transmission mount and it goes over here to the chassis. So you want to make sure that that's got a good connection there and then quite often they're just bolted straight onto the paint here. So it's a good idea to just whiz it off, maybe um, undo the bolts and give it a bit of a wriggle um, tighten it up again, maybe even put a bit of uh, conductive grease on there, on the thread or whatever. And you can also test that um, if there's any resistance there. To get the electrical plug off, you just there's a little tang here and you just flick it, pull it up. There's like a little step there. There we go. And it just slides out. Now this transmission hasn't done a lot of case since uh, they put one another one in under warranty. It might pay to actually uh, take the valve body out and have a look at what's going on in there. Um, that, those codes that we're getting, solenoids are stuck off, um, usually a contamination problem, so sometimes just cleaning it up will have an improvement. The valve body is located under this plastic cover here. Good idea to just give it a good blow out and clean before you remove it and also to move these cablings and there's a, there's a pipe at the bottom of the that cover there that you need to move just so you can actually pull the valve body out. I'll just remove the stone guard which has got eight, eight little 10 mil bolts and another little trick I do I put these neodymium magnets on the drain plugs uh, to hopefully collect any more rubbish that's on there and it'll give me an indication of how much rubbish is in there. You can see the bottom of the plastic valve body cover there too and there's this pipe here that just needs to be removed just so you can uh, you can see it doesn't leave much room there to get it off so we need to remove this pipe and move those cables and things out of the way just so we can get that out. I've just loosened those clamps there, one there, one there, and there's a bolt over here that we need to remove, and the other one is up here, and then that whole pipe section will come out. Now to get this turbo hose out of the way, this one, we need to undo the clamp under there, so you can just take these little 8mm bolts off and there's one 10mm one there and that'll allow you to just get, get your hand in there and loosen that camp, uh, clamp and get that hose right out of the way. You can see it now, I can get my hand over the top there, I just couldn't manoeuvre around. And there we go, hose is out now. You can see there's already a lot more access there. We've just got these cables in the way now. And there's also that radiator hose. Now for some reason this radiator drain plug's not working, the little valve.
must be blocked. So I'm just going to pop that little retainer clip on that radiator hose off. There you go, you can see I've just popped it off with the screwdriver and then you just pull that hose out. Now I've just taken the water hose that goes into that heat exchanger and moved the hose, the radiator hose and that hose out of the way. And I've undone the clip on this loom here just so that can move forward a bit. And cut the little tie down strip zip tie thing here just so that can move out of the way. And I've done undone the the little 10 mil nuts there and that plate can just come off. I'm not sure what that plate does. I believe at some stage that hose was connected to it. But it probably helps to uh, protect this plastic cover as well. Another thing I may have forgotten to mention, if you're going to reuse this plastic cover, just make sure that the transmission cools right down. Because when you take it off, if it's warm, it'll lose its shape and then probably won't seal properly. And now we're at the stage where we can just undo all these bolts and that cover will just come off. Okay, I've loosened the drain plugs there. Magnet's still on it. You can see it's got bugger all on there anyway. The oil's pretty clean in it. So if the oil was dark, then I wouldn't have even been bothering with this sort of job. But because it's all fairly clean, it's worth having a crack at uh, checking out those solenoids, they might be contaminated and also the sensors on the mechatronic plate. I'll just let the oil out of the other one, this is a lower point here but there'll be a little bit of oil in that plug as well. If you're going to get a uh, magnetic plug for these, the thread is 16mm by 1.5. Just make sure the the flange isn't too big. Um, you don't have to have an Allen key head on it, you can just have a normal head with a bit of a flange on it and uh, that'll just seal on that bit there. Just make sure it's not too big otherwise it's going to hit this little step there. This, the other one doesn't matter so much but this one here, if the flange is too big it might be in the way. And these are T30s, T30 Torx. Okay, got all the bolts off. Now it's just a matter of just slowly maneuvering it off. There we go. You'll see that. It's quite a bit of fine metal stuck on the magnet there and the solenoids are all on the inside of the valve body and here's the underside of the transmission and you can see that the filter these need these can't be replaced unless you pull the transmission apart but you can see on the filter they have magnets as well that are supposed to collect all that fine rubbish as well look how thick that is quite thick. So these magnets wouldn't be working anymore. Now all that fine metal that's just naturally created in the transmission would be attracted to the solenoids. The fine, that sort of the consistency of grease, you can see it's so fine, it's suspended in the oil, circulates through and gets attracted to the solenoids. I've printed that page and you can see where the X's are so basically as you're facing the transmission all these ones with the black dots on them all down the right hand side of the transmission or the driver's side and the top left hand four and then that whole thing will just come out and once you've got the valve body out you can also do an air pressure test on it 
and there are the locations of all the ports. There's not much room there, but starting from the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on the opposite side, the top four, one, two, three, four, and they're T30s, and then you'll be able to, you've got to get the valve body out far enough to clear those uh, mechatronic sensors. Now to pop this selector cable off, there's a little spring-loaded button there. You just press that down and then just pull it off. So, that pressing with my thumb, you can see it's gone right down and it just comes off easily like that. And then, you can see a bit hard to see there. There's a P and there's a D there. So you want to make sure that's in park now. Put it into drive. And over here, we've got the little plug there that we need to disconnect. And then you just move those wires out of the way. Be careful with that plug. Basically what you do is you just press it there and then the whole plug just slides out. And we just manoeuvre it around there and just set that to the side there. And we're in, we're in drive. And you can see that pin just comes out quite easily there. There it is. And those two bolts T25s. Now one other thing I like to do is just, you can put a bit of wire over that loom that runs along there and just poke it through the front here. Just tie it off on the grill. And now that should be enough room to get all these out. Okay, got all the valve body bolts out. Seven on the right, on the right hand side, and the four on the left hand side. And you can see that they're all the same length. Now I've just slid it out a little bit. Um, you can also see that the gasket's sort of gone, started going with it. Just make sure you don't wreck that. And I've left it like that just to drain out a little bit, makes it a little bit less messy. And now it's just a matter of manoeuvring it out. Just have to manoeuvre it around that cable there, and there she blows.